Writing this video made me sad. The Paper Mario series is weird, man. I already covered the batshit insanity of Super Paper Mario last video, so go watch that if you haven't already. The series is in a weird state right now, where the fans want one thing, yet Nintendo gives another. Most, if not all, fans would be very happy if they got another game in the style of Thousand Year Door, having a grand, charming story while improving its mechanics. I think we all have to accept the fact that it's not happening anytime soon. Nintendo is an incredibly stubborn company, and they always march with the beat of their own drum. Nintendo with Paper Mario is basically the dad that goes to a McDonald's drive-thru with his kids in the back seat and orders a black coffee. Thousand Year Door is an amazing game that's very close to my heart, and I can't put to words the lengths I would go to for that game to have a proper sequel, but it ain't happening. So. For now, let's ignore the fact that Nintendo decided to fix something that wasn't broken for seemingly no reason, and instead focus on the new games as their own separate thing, which is what they're clearly trying to be. The important thing to note here is that the derailment from the so-called Paper Mario formula that went on until Thousand Year Door actually started with this game, Super Paper Mario, and as I spent an entire video saying, this is not a bad game by any stretch. The problem with the new Paper Mario games isn't that they try something new. It's just that they're... not that great. While being in the same series as two of the most beloved Nintendo games ever. Not a great combination. It's like pizza and peanut butter. Don't try it. Don't... try it. So let's take a look at what makes these games so viscerally disliked by the fans, and if they truly deserve this treatment. It's not fair to expect these games to be exactly like the first two, but we will be comparing them quality-wise to see just what all the hubbub's about. Starting with... Now I will make the truly revolutionary statement that this game fucking sucks! For so many reasons! There are so many design decisions in this game that I find just... baffling. Where do I even start here? Um... Uh, okay, uh, let's play a game. Imagine for a second that you are the one in charge of where the Paper Mario series goes in the near future. And the previous game in the franchise was highly praised for its story, but was criticized a bit for its gameplay. You now have a dilemma on your hands. A conundrum. A quandary, even! Where do you go from here? Did you perchance answer, remove the story entirely? Because that's what they did! The plot of Sticker Star is practically non-existent. It's the same, Bowser gets the magical MacGuffin that makes him super powerful and kidnaps Peach as the first game, but with any charm, wit, and overall likability, completely siphoned out. Peach has a total of two lines in this game, right at the end, and Bowser has a grand total of fucking zero! These were the best written characters in other Mario RPGs, especially Bowser! In this game, they're just cardboard cutouts of them! And not just them, too. Any iota of character writing is just gone! There are no partners, which were very colorful and well-written characters. Vivian betraying her sisters who were mistreating her to stop doing the wrong thing and join Mario on his quest. Bobbery joining Mario to redeem himself after wallowing in grief, after losing his beloved wife to sickness while he was out to sea. Not to mention all these unique character designs. Yeah, none of that. The most Sticker Star has to offer in that regard is a toad that is green instead and likes stickers so he made the Sticker Museum. That's... It. The other huge problem with Sticker Star are design decisions for the gameplay. Sticker Star has turn-based combat, where you use stickers that you collect for attacks. Okay, fine. The issue is that battles don't give you any XP or level ups like in other RPGs. All they do is give you coins, which are only used for getting more stickers, which you won't need anyway because you get an abundance of coins and stickers just by playing the levels. 
There's also practically no penalty for running away, since you can do it effortlessly and it causes the enemy you were fighting to just vanish. This makes battles completely pointless. The most optimal way to play this game is to run away from every battle and just use the overpowered thing stickers on the required battles. This is so catastrophic for any traditional RPG. Battling is what you spend most of your time doing in RPGs. The moment you make those battles pointless, you have lost the game. Your reaction to battles becomes, ugh, and you just mash the escape button. That's what you do in this game. This is such a huge, noticeable flaw. How the heck did it go unnoticed until release? This isn't even the only problem with the game, although it's by far the biggest. There are so many crappy design decisions in this game, it borders on insanity. And not the good kind like with Super Paper Mario. These aren't fun, they're just asinine. For example, the combination of super obtuse puzzles and Kirsty being the worst hint system known to mankind. Oh really, Kirsty? Is water not good for stickers? Thanks for the tidbit, now tell me something that's freaking relevant. Not to mention the illusion of choice where it completely cock blocks any attempt at exploring by putting up obstacles you need things to cross, or going to the very end of a long level only to discover that you need one specific sticker to finish it that you might not have, meaning you have to go all the way back to the only town in the game and get it and do the level all over again. One such case is particularly bad. In a level in World 3, you need the bowling ball to knock down these pins that are at the very end of the level. If you don't have it, you have to do the level again after getting it. Even if you do have it, better hope you don't have one of the wiggler parts following you, because if you use it, he will kick it away for literally no reason getting rid of it. Just... Why? Whew. Gotta calm down. So, um, Sticker Star isn't a very good game, to put it lightly. Then Color Splash gets announced and uh, wasn't very positively received as soon as people realized it would continue what Sticker Star started. Being a sequel to a game most people hated and coming out very late in the lifespan of an already failed console pretty much ensured that Color Splash wouldn't sell very well. Color Splash is actually relatively harmless compared to Sticker Star. It was a massive improvement. It's not a bad game, it's just sort of okay. It has some god-tier writing that made me laugh many a time, so it has some of that good old Paper Mario charm, but it's otherwise very forgettable. So forgettable, in fact, that I never finished it. It's not bad, just mediocre in my opinion. And in a lot of ways, that's arguably worse than just straight up being bad. Although it heavily improved on some areas, the no XP issue from Sticker Star returned, and Origami King will do the same from the looks of it. Origami King will also have a more open world, and partners are sort of making a return, but aren't as developed as they were in previous games from the looks of things. These are all changes that brings the game closer to what the games used to be up to Thousand Year Door. Soon as they revealed these things, a question immediately popped into my mind. Why the hell do they make these constant improvements that bring the game closer to what it used to be? while simultaneously refusing to fix the one issue that completely snaps the whole game in two. This decision is obviously very deliberate. Nintendo is a stubborn company, as I said before. They are doing this precisely because they want to separate these games from the first two, for whatever reason. That, in and of itself, is fine. A game taking a different direction from the rest of the series isn't automatically a problem. They want to be their own thing. Problem is, they're not doing a very good job of it. Forget the fact that the games they're trying to separate themselves from are beloved by many and considered classics. Let's, let's just ignore that. You make the change that battles don't give you EXP. Such a huge design decision has to be the center of the game's design, meaning the entire game should be designed around this. The problem 
is precisely the fact that they aren't. They made it so that this very deliberate design decision seems like a bug instead of a feature. Which I sincerely hope Origami King fixes with the new battle system. But we'll see about that. Then there's what they did with the paper aesthetic itself. I actually really like the things they did with the paper theme in the recent games. Even Sticker Star had some great moments in it. This domino sequence where the entire map moves just to reveal a reminder that if you're enjoying this video and want to see more, then click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of every new upload is really charming and cool. However, it's one thing to enhance your game using the paper aesthetic, it's another thing entirely to reduce the game to the paper aesthetic. Every game is themed around something paper related, stickers, colors, origami, with no mention of these things in the other games. There is no mention of anything in Sticker Star in Color Splash, and I assume this will also be the case in Origami King. The paper theme now isn't just a cool, charming style. It is the crux by which everything in the game is allowed to stand, and it gets abused in some admittedly creative ways. I know the game is called Paper Mario, but the paper aesthetic is now the entire point of this new trilogy. Plus the whole absolutely no coherency between each entry thing. Like, Jesus, is this Paper Mario or Paper Star Wars? Did any of the recent games even happen? Did Mario just hallucinate them? What if when Dementio killed Mario and his friends in the third game, he never really came back and the new trilogy is just Mario going through the nine circles of hell to atone for his sins? Of course, why didn't I see this sooner? It makes so much sense now! Ah! Hey everyone, thanks for watching me go insane over an Italian plumber made of paper. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications, all that good YouTube stuff. To be notified of future uploads, it truly helps and I appreciate it. By the way, this video was written and recorded the day before Origami King came out. It's definitely out by now though. I'm pretty confident that Origami King will at the very least be much better than Color Splash, so we'll see whether this video will age like milk or wine.